Stredsvon 103 is a uh, very, very peculiar tank, as you can see. Not only is it basically a cheese wedge, it was actually the last tank to ever not have a turret, at least the last main battle tank. It just had a fixed gun. The gun had no azimuth or elevation. So I want to make something similar in From the Depths. How it aimed was, well, for azimuth it would just turn, but for elevation, the suspension would move up and down, causing it to tilt. And perhaps it would be better for me to be in the, uh, the tank planet. So I'm not going to recreate the Stradsvon, but I do want to make a similar tank with like a weirdly low profile. It aims with suspension instead of having any sort of elevation. I'm going to use ammo ejectors on this gun because I want to be smart about this. I know it's quite unusual. The way I'm going to incorporate hull suspension, I think... I think I know how I'm going to do this. This thing has a velocity of 498. That's really... Eh, that's not bad. But a 498 meter per second shell velocity. So here we have a second gun loaded with the same thing. And this gun will simply not fire. Alright, so we have it like this, so that this is being controlled. Isn't there a way to have it just, like, not shoot? Make it, like, aiming only? Yep. Okay, so this is aiming only. This guy's just gonna chill here. Look at this. Dope-ass tank. This is gonna be goofy. This gun just aims for reference. God, there's no way to find the current elevation. Or rather, this doesn't have the current elevation, meaning... Yippee! Our project has experienced its first complication. I am no stranger to this. So we're going to find the sh current ships forward. Find the difference between... Find the difference in angle between this. Alright, so I do from to row angle so we're going to use a pid to lower the raise the front suspension and lower the back suspension until we've evened out look at that wait did it already work it's already worked what the fuck all right so in the absence of a target, it drops back down to its normal values. But the moment we put in a target... Whoa! That works amazingly! What the fuck? That's like perfect! That's really cool! I'm so glad that worked so well. Oh, and look at that suspension slope. Only issue is we want this thing to, like, turn harder. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to make it so it doesn't do... It has no forward. If it's, uh... If the bearing difference is too big. Alright, so as it gets closer to 20, it's going to weaken it. Alright, now we're getting some forward because our bearings close. And as we're closing in on the bearing... We get more and more because we don't need bearing movement. Okay, so now if the, uh, if the bearing difference is too big, now it's just like slowly inching but if the bearing difference is too big it will just rotate to face them you know what i'm overriding some of the uh movement let's crank that shit we want it turning all right we're at negative one yard this thing should be 
cranking it. Why is it not? I think I might make this a full breadboard controlled tank. Oh, look at that now. Why are we like slow rolling forward? And so we'll do a PID for uh, distance, but critically, we will only do this if we are within a certain bearing. So we don't want this PID to be going rogue. So, um, if if A, then we use B. Otherwise, we use C. So if we are within a bearing where we want to actually be engaging, then we use our distance. Otherwise, if we are not in the bearing where we want to be using it, just say we're there so it doesn't bother giving a forward command. Otherwise, it'll think we're short, and then if we set it to zero, it'll think we're short, and then keep cranking and cranking, but we're not giving the forward command. Here, we're like giving it, we're lying to it and saying we're good. The other way would have been let it keep trying and trying and getting more and more, because PIDs will get more desperate the longer you are uh, short of your goal. So we don't want it building up that uh, desperation for uh, layman's terms. We spawn in quite far a karambit. Now, is it too far away? It's too close. We should be backing off. So once again, we want this to be inverted. Same issue we had with the yaw. All right, so we're focusing primarily on yaw. I think what we want, how the hell would I figure out? Because a lot of tanks are going to be trying to circle. Most tanks will try to circle. We want to be in, we want to be aiming in front of the tank. That's the issue is we're just never aiming. All right, I'm going to do some math. I take its position plus velocity we should get where it's about to be. and then we can find the bearing not on where it is but on where it will be this ship knows where the enemy is because it knows where the enemy isn't and where the enemy isn't is one second in front of where the enemy is is that making sense there's one more thing we need we don't want this to actually be where it's about to be in one second. This is currently where it will be in one second. We want it to be the direction we need to aim to be aiming at where it will be. So what it will be, direction we need to aim, fuck, it's where it will be minus where we are. So our location plus the vector we want is their location. So their location minus the vector we want is our location. So their location minus our location is the vector we want. That's believable enough. So that is the distance to get there. So now if we multiply a little bit, let's get where we want to be two seconds ahead of time. Perfect. Oh, we can do one better, actually. We can do one even better. D will be our uh, input speed. We've got the velocity of our main gun times rather the range divided by the velocity is about how much time it'll take to hit and that's what we're going to multiply it so it's times 1.2 so we we want to predict as far ahead as it will take for the barrel to hit or the uh, weapon to hit and now that's this is the bearing we want. It should be pretty similar to our bearing. What? It should be decently similar to our bearing. 
but a little more extreme, yes. And so this is what we're going to use for our bearing calculations. Math. Oh, and it's firing because what the fuck? All right, let's go back to uh, our bearing calc using just our bearing measurement. No! Of course, this is just the absolute value of the angle. No! How would I find the bearing between them? After much ado about everything, Here's my final formula. Does it work? Fuck. All right, I'm going to simplify it by flattening them and then just finding the angle between them. All right, this is not fucking right. Oh. Dude, it works perfectly. Holy shit, it works amazingly. Okay, it doesn't work if the ship's not there. Just kind of spins like an idiot. Go the other way. And then it uses the suspension aiming to slouch up and now it's closing the distance because it's got a fine enough bearing to shoot. We in business, the tank works. Okay, this gun is kind of insane. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. The bore evacuator there. Make the bore evacuator invisible. And then add a fake bore. <laughs> the wedge. This is a bit more reasonable and a bit less wedgy. Just gotta greeble the shit out of this tank. Ladders only work. I have magnet boots attached. Oh. 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 Yes, we can kind of make it. I have used meshes to offset. What the fuck is happening? Because I changed what it was, it switched to affecting the spring force to the suspension, and so it floats through the ground. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> uh, am I using my steering wheel correctly? That beautiful suspension aiming, baby. And holy shit. Oh my god. I think more tanks should come with couches built in. Not that comfy, but like... It's a couch, so shut the hell up. I need to find a way to make this interior look more cramped. My magazine is exposed on the bottom. I should fix that. Look at this. This looks like a home. I would love to be driving this tank. But like unironically, because this would be way safer than like any other tank. Oh no, never mind. Driver doesn't survive that. This is a nasty anti-air. Oh no. Now let's see how it functions in a fight. What the fuck did I just spawn in to fight my ship? Oh, I thought it was gonna fight a tank. This was in the, this was in the tank section. This is a bucket wheel excavator. 
Let's see if it does well. It's completely skedaddling. Holy shit, my thing is booking it backwards. It's going backwards at 32 meters per second. It is fucking running from this thing. I fucking love everything the Dust Winds gang makes. There's a War Thunder nerd in my Discord call berating me that my Stridzvan does not have enough muzzle velocity. Look at that lean. Why is it struggling over this hill? Struggling or is it just not going backwards because it's at the right range? Oh, it's at the range it wants to be at. Eight. Oh my god, but these shells do hurt. Oh, but it's kind of rough because this thing has uh, force fields. Wait. The little fucking drone ships have force fields? What the hell am I up against? But yeah, I think I'm going to call it there. I might return to this in the future. Might not. Might actually do something with these open shells. Because these are basically an air gap to stop uh, heat shells at this point. Which was their intention. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. This was my first time actually building like a real life realistic tank. So uh, drop any suggestions you have in the comments below or in the suggestions channel of my discord. I'm much more likely to respond there. But yeah, thank you for watching and have a nice day.